welcome to a new episode of ZI Reacts, uh, the show where we react to news uh, that just happened. And typically, we usually react to E3 news because that's the big news of the day today. Uh, Breath of the Wild, the new Zelda game, finally has a title. Uh, today I'm joined by Alfred Tabax, a uh, co-host of the podcast and a writer. Say hi, Alfred. Hi, Alfred. <laughs> and a um, assistant editor on the writing staff here at Zelda Informer, Kristen Rosario. Hello, glad hope, to be here. Yeah, I hope I didn't butcher your last name. No, you actually got dead on right. Okay, usually, that, People that's awesome. usually butcher my first name, so don't <laughs> worry. All right. Well, obviously, uh, the big news of the day, Zelda Wii U now has an official title, uh, Zelda Wii U slash NX, which is Breath of the Wild, not Breath of the Wind, as some people have been saying. I am I hate that so much. I can't remember what happened to me when I was posting up everything on the post for a queue. It was like, Breath of the Wind, ah, crap! Yeah. <laughs> just... I know, I was talking with um, Colin earlier and he said, I keep confusing it, which is something that's going to happen. It's bound to happen, but I'm sure we'll get the hang of it. I, I even mess up a few times. I'm starting to not call it wind as much. But yeah, E3, uh, Nintendo's E3 presentation opened with a trailer for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I uh, showed a lot of stuff. Link in different outfits, uh, some white armor. We saw a lot of scenery, riding horses, um, using different weapons. I thought that was a pretty great trailer. I know, Kristen, you were very busy covering the trailer, so you might I, not... I did get a chance, I, like I said before we started recording, I did get a chance to watch it, and right off the bat, I'm thinking, wow, this is Zelda Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually what I've seen a lot on Twitter, is that Except... people are calling this Skyrim, but Zelda. Yeah, exactly. Like they don't have they already confirmed they don't have like any of the MP uh, any of the NPCs besides the old man and um none of the towns in cuz it's, it's just a demo, but just imagine with all that, yeah, now it's Zelda Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. Uh so Alfred, what did you think of the trailer for Breath of the Wild? Whew. Okay. So um I was sitting there watching it on my iPhone in my car um, because I was out at the time but I was to to put a pun on it I was breathless Um, (laughs) because it was it was it was kind of better than I expected and I I had pretty high expectations for it and I was still a little skeptical about it before it started but you know seeing all the different mechanics like the hints of cooking and, and the hints of like more western RPG elements um, mixed in with the typical JRPG elements was pretty cool. Um, that's kind of what I've been saying about this Zelda game that it needs to have. Um, my, one of my first articles for the site was about that. Um, but I was really, really excited to see all that stuff and um, to see how they made the world feel more alive in the game. Yeah, I kind of got even like watching it too. I got kind of like a Wind Wakery vibe, like with the the art style and some of the items and people that show up, like the Kokoros from Wind Waker. I kind of got that Zelda, oh, that Wind Waker feel to it as well. Yeah, definitely. I think um, the art style is uh, very reminiscent of the Wind Waker, but just not as cartoony. It takes on a more serious vibe. Uh, Al Numa actually said that. Uh, this art style is kind of inspired by Japanese animation, uh, anime, mm-hmm. which is not looked, surprising yeah, you, at all. Yeah, you can definitely uh, see that in the trailer. Oh, yeah. I have mean, you guys it, seen the anime God Eater? Uh, I have not. I've heard it is great. It yeah, looks same. very, very similar to that kind of style, like in term, terms of the stylation or style, whatever, uh, how it's stylized in terms of like the characters, um, just the different way that things move. It looks very similar to that kind of a style. Um, of animation it looks really really that's the first thing i noticed right off the bat i was like wow this looks like it could be an anime which definitely you know i i love playing rpgs that feel like they could be like animes like great rpgs that don't feel like video games for oh, yeah, like this, in a good way yeah this definitely has that feel to it too besides the whole western rpg part definitely does have that anime feel to it yeah and that's another thing that i'd like to talk about uh chris you just mentioned Breath of the Wild has uh, Western RPG elements. 
uh, this is kind of a comeback uh, for Zelda because in Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link there were some RPG elements in there like leveling up um, you know having different stats uh, that's something we haven't seen in future Zelda games after that but it looks like Breath yeah, I... of the Wild is taking on more RPG elements yeah core gameplay wise this the most similar I can feel from this Zelda game is definitely just Zelda 2 with the whole you know venturing out system the different towns the different NPCs you can talk to the various different dungeons this definitely has core wise more of a Zelda 2 feel to it definitely and uh, you know as far as RPG elements go we have the inventory screen uh, which actually shows Link which is something that a lot of RPG game RPG games do uh, like if he's in a snowy area and you go to the uh, inventory you can see Link kind of shivering it was I I felt kind of bad for him <laughs> but uh, as oh, you yeah, as you pick that. up as you pick up items and use them they get damaged uh, you can upgrade items uh, you know you can collect a bunch of different weapons uh, in the trailer we we did see the master sword though so I'm wondering when we yeah. get that yeah that's well, the we thing kinda... too oh go on Alfred okay. well we kind of saw I think they were like I like I kind of said earlier, or like a, a while back, but before this, um, is that I feel like Nintendo's kind of been experimenting with a lot of these elements in previous Zelda games, um, because in Skyward Sword we saw how the shields had a durability to them, mm -hmm. and that they would break after a certain amount of use. Yeah. And while it's not necessarily my favorite, like, thing for an RPG to use, like breakable weapons, that is something that's like a bit more of a risky step in. A different direction for Nintendo because it, that makes the game a little bit more difficult because you have to manage your items you have to manage how durable they are if, if they're about to break soon um, so it kind of adds like a, a more like they said in the treehouse a more survival aspect to the game yeah. now I'm yeah what I'm curious at is the master sword design because in the title in the title design, you see the Master Sword, but the Master Sword looks like crap. I mean, it looks very <laughs> worn and stuff. Yes, and it looks very dormant. I'm, yeah, and, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm curious to see if they're going with kind of that Wind Waker route where, like, you have to, like, essentially rebuild the Master Sword to get mm -hmm. it back at full strength or something. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that, um, you know, in line with the RPG elements of having to upgrade items. Uh, that was something that Aonuma focused on in interviews following the stream. He said... Yeah, uh, upgrading is going to be a big part of this. And I wouldn't be surprised if you had to kind of rebuild and upgrade the Master Sword like in the Wind Waker. You know what would be even cooler, though, yeah. is if that was the last that we saw of that Master Sword, and this game brought in like a new one, like a reforging of a new Sword of Evil's Bane. Ooh. Um, to like take out, because the, the idea is, is that like, they said earlier on, or like uh, I think it was the Kotaku article, said that this is a hundred years after Link's hibernation from we don't know when. Um, yeah. But so there's that big period of a hundred years, and the Master Sword's rusted. So maybe it's you know it's time for the Master Sword to be put to rest and and a new one to come up. Um, and that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting. See, like like this is probably like probably the first variation of Master Sword. Probably gonna like down see like a second variation of it. That would be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, so after the trailer, Nintendo followed up with a six-hour live stream <laughs> that we all watched. Well, not all of us, but most of us watched to its entirety uh, to report on. And as we're recording this right now, uh, our staff is still hard at work reporting on that, even though our site has been going through some outages because of increased traffic. Yeah, as of right now, like I said, I have like a good 16 and 17 posts that I have done, but unfortunately the site's just like acting really wonky right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so before we dive into some of the mechanics that we've seen in the following giant live stream the Treehouse did, I'd like to talk about uh, the one story element that has me a little intrigued, and I think uh, might have you a little intrigued too. Alfred mentioned earlier, Link... When he wakes up at the beginning of the game, he wakes up in this bathtub type of thing that has been described, I believe it was Kotaku that called it a tomb. Um, he, Link's been sleeping there for apparently 100 years. So I'm kind of wondering, uh, you know, if this Link is a Link from a previous game that just woke up. 
you know, after the game ended, he was uh, maybe wounded badly, was about to die, and was sealed into this chamber to revive him, and he woke up 100 years, you know, you... I hope this gets explained, but what possibilities um, do you think could be the explanation for why Link has been sleeping for a century? Timeline. I think it has everything to do with the timeline. It's placed on a timeline because uh, it has to do with the game before it or the adventure before it if it's not based on one of the games. What happened? You know, did Link fail? Did Link succeed? Did Link kind of go, Watch out! you know, what happened? <laughs> you know, um... If I'm not to be like, I'm trying to be specific with this because Nintendo's always careful with their wordings. Um, in the man, in the the timeline, there's the the fall of the hero. Yes. Right. So we have that whole period where he like where there's no link. Um, what would be really cool is if this took place like right after that, like. The, the fall of the hero, I think it's called... I think, yeah, the downfall the, timeline. The decline of the last hero. Yeah, the hero is defeated. And so that, that leads in a link to the past, oracles and stuff like that. Um, and that would be really cool to see because we don't know how that happened. Because when that was revealed, we were all like, whoa, where did... When did Link die? Like, when did he get killed? Yeah. Um, or get defeated? And so it'd be really cool to see that part. But I'm also thinking that this could be right after Skyward Sword, and he was sealed away because in one of the Treehouse videos they mentioned the goddess Hylia, which was you know the the primary goddess of Skyward Sword, and it'd be really cool to see what happened after Skyward Sword, um, and maybe this is how Ganon becomes Ganon, or this is how all this happens. Um, that'd be really cool to see. Yeah, that would be very interesting. I, I think a lot of people speculate it takes place sometime after the event of Skyward Sword. I mean, one thing to note in this is that there is a lot of Sheikah in this game. A whole lot of Sheikah. <laughs> Interestingly I mean, enough, we haven't actually seen any Sheikah people. Just imagery. We'll, we'll probably see yeah, we'll probably see that in the full version or like a future trailer, but oh they're in there for sure, that's a fact. Hmm. Uh, one since you brought up the Sheikah, uh, let's bring up the the tablet that Link had, the Sheikah Slate. It was a book last year. It was a book in the uh, little thirteen seconds of footage, thirteen sixteen seconds uh, of a camera panning around Link on a pona. That was a book. And then when more official art was released, some people said, "Well, now it kind of looks more like a, a stone tablet of some sort." And I looked at it, and I'm like, mm, it could be either. I'm not really sure. Uh, so when, in, I forget if it was in the trailer, or I, I believe it was in the immediate live stream to follow, uh, when they said, this is the Sheikah Slate. Uh, it kind of tells you what to do next. Um, you know, can make waypoints, acts as binoculars. I'm like, okay, that's what we've seen. And he does keep it on his hip at all times. Um, what do you guys think could be the possible lore behind this? Uh, it is obviously tied to the Sheikah, but like how? Why is it in the tomb with Link? I think, I think they, somebody left it there so that way when it was his time again, they would help him, you know, get back on his feet and help him know what his, ne his new mission is. I think it was, it was made, it was kept there by Sheikah to help him pretty much when he finally woke up again. Mm, yeah. Um, Alfred, I have a question specifically to ask you because I'm very interested in your answer to this. Uh, not to be mm -hmm. mean to Kristen, but, <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, what do you think of Nintendo including this Sheikah Slate in the game as a very instrumental uh, item that Link will be using? Do you think it was a, uh, a good choice or do you think they should have just given Link like a telescope? Or something, you know, not have the Sheikah slate. What do you think? Well, I think there, there's two weird things about this, or there's one weird thing about this, but I think it's a good idea um, because it consolidates a lot of like a, a lot of items and a lot of menus. Um, so you can use it. It's the main menu. Um, it's the inventory. It's the telescope. Um, it's the map. 
So all of it, it, it functions as like a bunch of different things. But at the same time, the thing that kind of is weird to me is that when I was watching the live stream, there wasn't a use, it wasn't being used on the gamepad, it was used on the main screen. Which is weird that they're not using the Wii U gamepad to mirror the the Sheikah slate because it looks like a Wii U gamepad. That's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, yeah. oh, that's how they're going to use it in this game. I wonder how it's going to be used in the NX. But it's it's not being used that way. Mm-hmm. It's being used as like the gamepad is just the controller and it's something that appears on the screen. Yeah. So I'm kind of interested to see or kind of interested to hear why they decided to not go with that. Maybe it has something to do with the NX. Um, but I think it's a pretty cool new item that we get. Um, I really like their in- inclusion of technology or, or what we see as like a primitive Sheikah technology into the game. Um, something we've never seen before. Mm. Uh, I, th- I have your answer as to why that's not on the gamepad. Uh, in an interview that I briefly scanned through looking for news during one of the breaks in the Treehouse stream, uh, Aaron Numa talked about how uh, previously at the Game Awards footage, he was using the map on the gamepad screen. And this time, there is no map on the gamepad screen. It's on the lower right-hand corner uh, of the TV screen. Now, he, he said this is because he liked having the map there uh, at all times instead of having it on the gamepad. That doesn't add up. To me, I, I think that's a load of crap. I think they did that so they wouldn't have to change it around for the NX version. So people said, well, I like yeah. the Wii U version better because you can use the gamepad this way. I think the gamepad is being uh, underutilized now for, Ze- for uh, I almost called it Zelda Wii U, um, Breath of the Wild, because it's being released simultaneously on Wii U and NX. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's something not a lot of people will complain about because I don't hear a lot of love for the gamepad. I personally <laughs> really like the controller, uh, but I really don't. Yeah. I really don't care if the map isn't on the gamepad. But I think for the same reason, uh, the Sheikah Slate does not appear on the gamepad because, uh, as Anuma specifically said, Zelda Wii U, which is Breath of the Wild, uh, on Wii U and NX will be the same experience. Mm -hmm. So I guess he didn't want the controls to be different, which I can understand that. Uh, What do you guys think? Like, the only gamepad feature I saw, and I brought this up to you before, like, a a half hour before we started this, was the the mic thing. Yeah, the the mic thing. There's that that little mic thing. Yeah, that's the only gamepad feature I saw. I mean, mm-hmm. other than that, I don't know if they're actually adding anything else to the gamepad. Yeah, on the on the Treehouse stream, if you'll notice, on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a small, uh, I believe it's a circle, with audio waves, purple audio waves. And the waves start moving uh, when someone talks into the gamepad or is holding the gamepad and talks near it. Uh, it picks up the audio levels. Why does it do that? I mean, what does that what does that accomplish? I'd be interested to see if, like, going back and watching the live stream, if at a certain distance the moblins and the enemies recognize Link, and the little purple waves are going up higher, and if it's a like a stealth kind of thing, like the quieter you are when you play the game, the quieter Link is, and yeah, so enemies can't can't so I hear can't or blare can't see. ACDC in the background when I'm trying to sneak up on Bokoblins. I mean, you can, but you just wouldn't be sneaking up on Bokoblins. Yeah, no hideaway to hell. <laughs> You'd be playing Metal Gear Solid all wrong, basically. Yeah. Or all right. Well, that's true. And speaking of sneaking, uh, a brand new sneaking mechanic is in Breath of the Wild. Um, you can crouch and sneak like a lot of stealth games enable you to do, which I think is a great addition. If they didn't have that, I would be a little disappointed because... Sneaking up on Bokoblin camps was is one of the things I'm most looking forward to. I, I love kind of being stealthy. In in uh, the Wind Waker HD that I've been playing uh, for the Bokoblin Towers or Moblins, whatever the heck they are, uh, I kind of sneak up the ladder and kind of walk slowly so they don't see me and then come up from behind and sneak on them. Uh, that's something I'm kind of looking forward to. I'm glad they added this sneak option. Before that, though, we, we need to talk about the fact that right off the bat, 
they showed that we can now jump in a Zelda game. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, mar- I, was, I flipped I was like, out oh. when I saw that. Yeah, it, finally, we can jump in a Zelda game. Um, and this, again, is a returning mechanic from Zelda 2. You could jump in Zelda 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to spend a good hour, as soon as I get out of that bath, just jumping for a good hour. Just saying, <laughs> look, I can jump now. <laughs> Jumping yeah. and climbing are going to be really cool things yes, that we can finally climbing. do in a Zelda game. We saw Link climbing in the new art from a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nate, uh, editor-in-chief, Zelda former Nathaniel Ruffle Jance, the boss man, was saying, uh, you know, this art, could it hint at a new climbing mechanic? And I'm like, I, I guess so. And right off the bat, we see Link climbing. He can climb up anything. And he can jump up things as he's climbing. And has, like, even, yeah. a, like, a stamina gauge. And I'm like, holy crap, that's awesome. Yeah, he's... But he's, like, Spider-Man, though. Like, there, I saw some shots where he just... He climbed up a bare wall. Like, mm-hmm. I'm up. You know, and instead of just rock climbing. It's like, he's literally Spider-Man in this game. Yeah, I know, though, the one thing he can't climb, though... Uh, they specifically mentioned this during the last segment of the Treehouse stream, uh, when they were in the last two uh, shrines, I believe they're called, the mini-dungeons, uh, Link cannot climb up the walls there, because uh, apparently they're really smooth. So I, get, I think that's the only thing Link can't climb up on. He can climb up basically anything else. I've seen uh, you know, steep inclines that he's climbing up that go the other way. <laughs> like, And he's climbing up them. I'm like, how? Is he doing this? No mountain gear, no special Spider-Man gloves. I mean, it was Slick just... Slick walls, my only weakness. Yeah. So climbing, jumping, using the Sheikah tablet to, you know, make waypoints as binoculars. The sneaking mechanic. These are all mechanics that I think Nintendo um, put a lot of thought into, and they're doing right by adding them in Breath of the Wild. I, do you guys agree with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. They've added the just from watching over five hours this game. You can tell they put a whole lot of effort into this game because they know this is like the Wii U swan song. So they put everything into this game. You can definitely tell just from watching that. Yeah, the Wii U swan song and the NX, one of the NX's hopefully first games launch title. Yeah. Um. There's one more an, another mechanic uh, that I'd like to point out is the food. Did, I, oh, yeah. did anyone pick that out? Like, Link gathers items, and then he can come across, like, a fire and mix them Dude, together. You can eat a raw steak like a boss, apparently. You can eat raw steak. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, I, I know one Treehouse employee said she just likes to take a bunch of ingredients, throw them all into, like, a cooking pot at a Bokoblin camp, and just see what comes out. <laughs> yeah... Yeah, the food. I like the food system. It's it's nice to see something else besides you know hearts, choo choo jelly potions. Yeah, fairies. there are no hearts in this game. No pick mm, yeah. a hearts. Well, I you know there is going just the only thing is close thing is going to be just the heart containers. But other than that, everything else is like you have to forage for your food, your health. Well, we don't know if there are going to be heart containers though. Yeah, it looked Link like there was a specific hearts. all throughout. It looked like there was really? a specific way of like because halfway through the treehouse. Uh, live there were three yellow hearts following him Mm -hmm. and so that might be like food or an elixir or something but i think the way that you would do it is i'm imagining based on the way that this is going it's some sort of like progression or something that you uh some sort of food or something that you unlock after a while it's not necessarily like oh beat this dungeon get a heart beat this dungeon get a heart or get a heart piece Um, yeah they they definitely they they used uh i don't know what it was whether it was an elixir or food, but I know they definitely did uh, eat something to give them temporary hearts because I, I did take note of that. It tempor- temporarily for like, I don't know, 10 minutes gives you three extra hearts. Yeah, um, I can see later down the line there being like an item that permanently increases your hearts. It won't be a car- heart container, but it would be something, that an item or food item that will help it permanently increase it. I don't know, man. I, I kind of want to see the return of heart containers, but I can see Nintendo dropping those. You know, Anuma yeah. keeps saying, I want to break the conventions of Zelda. Well, That's what they kept on saying for five hours straight. Yeah. This is a big mm. world, and, they, they and we're breaking the <laughs> conventions of Zelda. There, I just spoiled the entire live stream for you. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially the theme of that entire Treehouse presentation. Yeah, but there's a lot more stuff in there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I was immediately excited about because I've wanted a cameo from this guy for a long time. <laughs> the old man. The old I man like the who's old like, man. it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. He's back. He's back. Guys. Oh, I, I hated the tree. You know the tr- the, the, the the annoying treehouse girls. I oh, the, the ones annoying. who kept Link shirtless in the snow. <laughs> yeah, no, I hate. There's a part where the old man shows up in a dungeon and they go, "Oh, he's he's about as annoying as the owl." I'm like, "No, he's not." Yeah, from he's amazing. Seen, from what I've seen, he is the most. He is way more helpful than that oh! owl from Ocarina. Yeah, he's, I mean, you know, the owl's just like, oh, go here, do this, have a good day. But the old man's like, in the E3 demo, the old man literally gives you the glider sailcloth. Yeah, and when you get to a top of a mountain, he'll give you, he'll see that you're cold, and he'll give you warm clothes. Yeah. I mean, he, he's amazing. <laughs> the, I mean, I was so happy to see him. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the original Legend of Zelda in 3D form. That's what it yeah. feels like. What yeah, I think fun. is really cool is like when we saw for the in in like a glimpse or like a distance, we saw the Temple of Time. Yes. And I was like, is is that is that the Temple of Time? Yes, they it's actually like, there's, went. There's no way. They actually went to outside uh, in the courtyard there and on top of it, and mm-hmm. there was a little uh, uh, text popped up in the bottom left that said Temple of Time. So yes. Yep. And that I was like, that that's really cool that they brought that back, and I can only. Wait to like I can't wait to see what else they brought back and I loved seeing the Karokes like that was like, whoa oh, that, that they're they're in this game now yeah I was like I was wondering wow. like <laughs> direct so Wind Waker this reference. may yeah this may have happened close to Wind Waker or it may happen because that's not just any one of the Karokes that's one specifically from Wind Waker like they all look different and there was one that looked specifically like him yeah so I'd yeah be interested there to were see... two of them that I counted one uh, two in the uh, stream. Mm-hmm. And I'd be really interested to see where they came from, if the Great Deku Tree's here. Um, because it looks like, from what I could tell, like uh, we've reported that they only have four main like big, big dungeons. Mm-hmm. And so I could see that being like, okay, there's the snow area, the fire area, the forest, and then um, whatever I, else. I believe there was a Probably desert. like a spirit temple or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I could be like, I could see them doing a forest area with the great Deku tree and having to go on a quest there. Um, and just kind of seeing maybe the return of some like familiar and unfamiliar uh, characters. Um, that would be really cool. As long as the great Deku tree doesn't look messed up like he does in the Wind Waker. <laughs> he doesn't look that bad in the Wind Waker. You're over exaggerating. <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, one <laughs> one uh, small mechanic that I wanted to talk about. Um, and uh, during the treehouse stream, they were on a hill looking down at a river. Uh, there are a lot of rivers in this game that we saw. There's waterfalls. There's a raft that returns from the original NES game. But there were fish down there, and he's like, "Oh yeah, fish can appear d- depending on the time of day." And I'm like, "Yes, because I love fishing. I love fishing in games. It's amazing." Then, then watch me now. Watch me bomb all of them. Yes, he's like, "Let's go fishing," and I'm like, "Oh, he's gonna pull out a fishing pole. P- fishing returns, and then he pulls out a bomb, throws it in the water, and kills them." I'm like, "Oh my word!" That was amazing. That bomb was my favorite, fishing. one of my favorite parts of that um, presentation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, and hunting other animals too. You can hunt bison. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they well, mentioned twice. They mentioned yeah, twice it's... that you don't have to hunt, which I thought was, I guess, considerate of people that didn't want to harm, you know, animals. But I'm gonna hunt the bison. I'm gonna eat the steak. Like. <laughs> don't don't harm the animals, but slaughter all the uh, bokoblins. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Peter will be at least halfway pleased. This is kind of a compromise, you know. You don't have to harm the animals. <laughs> I... I just like that there's actual animals, not just like enemy types. There are yeah. actual like animals in this game. That you and there's ducks hunt. too. Yeah. And ducks. Yep. Hor- I heard wild ducks, horses, like, wild ducks, bison. It's Minecraft. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I tweeted out uh, when Link started mining the orb, which is another mechanic. Uh, he started like mining or hitting a rock with like an axe, and some ore came out. And I tweeted out the Legend of Zelda Minecraft, and it got a couple likes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I know once one thing they didn't show a lot was nighttime cycle, and uh, of course 
when it comes to Zelda games, the nighttime cycle, the most obvious enemy is the pose. We didn't see any of that. Any, barely saw any nighttime cycle stuff. There was like, one of the common enemies, though, is the Stalfos that comes out at night in Ocarina yeah. of Time. We did see those. I know, Stalfos, but I'm curious to see if they're bringing back the pose. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm I not sure. It, it's kind of like, you know, I, I know I talked about breaking the conventions of Zelda. Uh, and I assume that means bringing in some new enemies. And mm -hmm. as far as new enemies, we saw three. There was the, uh, the Guardian. There was like a mini Guardian. And, uh, oh, what was the other one that I, I can't... Oh, yeah, there was like a big... It was like a big stone. The rock bug. thing. Yeah, rock thing. I can't even remember yeah. the name of it. It was weird. Uh, but then we have Keys, uh, Choo Choo's, of course, the Bokoblins. So I wonder if we will see the pose or what other familiar enemies, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so back to the mining mechanic. Uh, we saw a lot, and, and I mean a lot, of different ore. I think there was like six, seven different types of ore that Link collected in the duration of the six-hour live stream. Um, I think they'll be used to, you know, upgrade upgrade your weapons but i'm wondering if instead of that uh you'll be able to sell them at towns because there are rupees in this game we didn't see rupees at all in the stream but one of the treehouse employees said no you could sell that for a lot of rupees and i'm like okay so there are rupees they just haven't shown them yet so what what do you guys think that the ore will be used for upgrading yeah. yeah, definitely upgrading. If we're if we're talking anything like Skyrim, they're gonna they more or it's mainly gonna be used to upgrade items and weapons because Anuma Anuma already confirmed that you can do that for in this game. So yeah, crafting new stuff. Yeah. Again, I think Minecraft. that's gonna be its biggest use. Yeah. Well, like, cause if we're talking about like upgrading, okay, so it's like, oh, well, my sword's running low on iron or steel, or like that's the only way to repair it. Okay, well, I've got X amount of ore of this kind i'm just going to repair it or i'm going to fortify it um mm -hmm. that kind of a thing kind of like i don't know that that kind of brings me to like brings me memories of, of dark souls with fortifying your sword um with different ores um yeah. which you know dark souls has always been kind of related to zelda as being a, a darker more gritty like difficult version of zelda um and it'd be it's kind of cool to see some elements from that make it into this and i know that they might not be like directly hearkening back to dark souls but that is a mechanic that you know you you see in very few games now yeah. um but is still in you know dark souls still in a few other games mm -hmm. yeah okay so um i think we only have a few mechanics left to talk about um we talked about the new sailcloth, uh, which, by the way, looked amazing. I, I, I figured mm -hmm. that would change, and it's not called the sailcloth anymore. It's called the paraglider, uh, yeah. and there's stamina with that. Um, but another thing I wanted to talk about is they kept referring to the starting area as the plateau. There's four um, shrines at the plateau, the mini dungeons. Uh, and then from there, you can jump off in any direction you want in any part of the world. Uh, which we did get a small glimpse of uh, during the last couple segments, but we really didn't see any uh, massive gameplay there. Um, so I, I'm wondering, you know, what is beyond the plateau that Nintendo doesn't want us to see, and why the E3 demo and the Treehouse stream, for the most part, only is on the plateau. I think the main reason is because the other areas outside the plateau are probably heavily story based or they're heavily like they're like towns and npcs they're like and you know they're all part of the story so they don't want you to go out there just yet because well we haven't really talked about the story mm. yeah and they said that um there was a bit of controversy going on i saw on twitter uh for a moment people were like oh uh, a representative said there's no uh, you know groups of npcs there's no towns or villages and i'm like well that kind of sucks but you know whatever but then uh, someone came out and said, no, that's wrong. Um, there is towns and villages. And then Aonuma cleared it up. He said, uh, there is towns and villages. Or it was Bill Trinan. There are towns and villages, but they're not in the E3 demo or the live stream because 
we don't want to spoil anything because in the original Zelda, you know, you went in not knowing what the story was. And they said, you know, they don't want to spoil the story now either. You, they just want you to figure it out on your own. They were walking by an area towards the very, very tail end of one of the like segments of the live scre- streams. And there were like these pillars that looked like they had some sort of inscriptions on them. And uh, I think it was, I don't remember the name, um, but it was who, the girl that was playing walked up to him. And I think it was Bill Trent was like, oh, we shouldn't go over there. That's a big story po- uh, plot. So we should just go ahead and move on somewhere else. It's like, we don't want to spoil that for him. So yeah, even in I that area, that. yeah, even in that yes, area, yeah. then there's still things that can be seen and things that can be found. Mm-hmm. Um, that are story related. So it's not just like, okay, well, this is the starting area. There's absolutely nothing to see here except just to get used to the to the game. Um, so it's a very... I, I think they took a lot out that is in the starting area that we will see once we play the game. Like, for sake of, like, spoilers. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's another thing about, you know, the story not wanting to be spoiled and finding it out for yourself, like in the original Zelda. Uh, there was an entire segment uh, with Aonuma and Bill Trinan about how this game draws a lot of inspiration from the first Zelda on NES. Uh, yeah. How you, how you just dropped into the world, meet the old man, then boom, that's it. Go where you want. You can find dungeons wherever. Uh, they specifically mentioned the raft and showed it, and they're like, oh, here's the raft uh, from the NES game. I'm like, sweet. There was one, I believe there was one segment where Anuma was on, and they, they showed how, like, a lot, some parts of it were inspired by um, the original NES game. They showed that art shot of, like, Link kneeling down in the NES version, looking at the mountains, yeah. and they recreated that little shot. And apparently, I think Trenin or Anuma said it, they did recreate those same mountains in the game. Yeah, they did. Um, they're yeah. called the the Twin Peaks, I believe. D- near the end, uh, there was a little video segment where Link was paragliding through the Twin Peaks, and they're like, "Oh, there's the Twin Peaks from the manual." Yeah, and they, like I saw, they even posted up like a picture of it just as a comparison shot yeah. to show it. Yeah. Which I I I really like because it's fan service, but it's not going too far out of the way to be like, oh, this is fan service. Um, you know, I feel a lot of criticism for reboots today, uh, as far as movies and games go, is that they go too far with the fan service. So, you know, new fans who are just getting in are like, what is going on? I don't get all of this. Yeah, uh, they don't get the joke. With you know? with Breath of the Wild. Um, you know, I think it's going to draw a lot of new fans because I saw on Twitter, you know, a lot of people like, I've never played a Zelda game before, but this looks amazing. Uh, so I think, you know, the amount of fan service that Nintendo is putting out, you know, the subtle stuff, uh, you know, the game isn't based around just fan service. It's based around making a great game inspired by the first one. But, you know, it's an experience that everyone will be able to enjoy right off the bat. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the, speaking of, like, not necessarily fan service, but things that, like, they mentioned that, like, kind of were a joke in the, the treehouse that not a lot of people would get if they weren't Zelda fans from the past, um, was in Skyward Sword, if you may f- so fondly remember how every time you picked up an item, oh. it told you about that item. Yes. And... They picked up an item in the game, and it told you about it, and then the guy stopped, and he's like, okay, so what's great about this game is you pick up an item once, and it tells you about it, but then for the rest of the game, you you don't hear about it. You already know what that item is. And I was like, okay, I feel like he's commenting on Skyward Sword, but yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> well, definitely, because in Skyward Sword, one of, the, one of the beefs I have with that game is those stupid, like, gold uh, artifacts or whatever the heck they're called. Uh, the little gold the things with a hole in the middle that you pick up every time you play, and it'll tell you what it is. You know, I always see that meme. Oh, you've uh, collected 45 of these. Let's learn about it again. Once you collect one in Breath of the Wild, once you collect an item, it'll tell you about it. Then it will never tell you about it again. And I think that's mm-hmm. awesome. Oh, yeah. like uh, I'm, I've been playing Ocarina of Time 3D a lot uh, recently, and it's like every time you pick up a school tool, it reminds you about the gold school tool side quest. <laughs> 
It's yeah. like it constantly has to remind you. Oh, by the way, this is a gold school too, a gold icon. Make sure to send it to such and such. I'm like, I yeah. get it. It's like, yeah, I've played the game for a while now. I kind of know this. I already have like 30 skull chulas. Yeah. <laughs> Even the final one, I think it has a little dialogue. Even the final one, sound, getting the final school still has the same exact kind of freaking dialogue. Yeah, it's not like, oh, you collected the last one, go get your reward. It's like, you can collect all of these throughout the world. It's like, shut up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, so I think we covered uh, the majority of the news. Do you guys have anything else that you want to comment on? The voice acting. The voice acting, yes, that's a big thing. Um, yeah, because they heard confirmed... Wake Up Link at the beginning of the trailer. Yeah, and they confirmed there is more voice acting. The Game Informer, uh, it was the Game Informer article, I think. I was believe they so. Confirmed, yeah, it, they confirmed, or oh, no one confirmed, yes, there's more voice acting, but he didn't confirm how much more. Was it everybody except Link, or is it like only certain story driven characters? Mm-hmm. He didn't, wasn't clear on that. Yes, which I think is. A good stepping off point uh, instead of going, you know, whole hog and saying, oh, by the way, every character uh, has voice acting. Because I don't believe the old man had full voice acting. He did? No, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. So I think it's good that there's going to be some voices, um, just not, you know, every character, which I think is, is a good kind of just getting into an experience that maybe, you know, the next Zelda game will have more voice acting, you know? It's just testing the waters right now. Well, I think the the deal with that is Zelda's a cross-cultural game, and so it's it's very popular in the East, and it's very popular in the West, and if they had voice acting for the entire game for every character except for Link... They'd have to go through and redo all of that voice acting, unless they, you know, wanted to just do subs. Yeah. Um, but I don't see Nintendo fully committing to that. Like, Xenoblade Chronicles X had full dubbing, and that was a massive undertaking. And with all the things that they're trying new in, in Breath of the Wild, I think that it would only, I want to say this, it would have only one cost more and then probably delayed the game more to get full voice acting <laughs> for every region and we don't need another delay i yeah, think at no. best we're going to probably get like Amer- american voice track and like a japanese voice track and that's mm-hmm. it yeah and uh about the voice acting you know the voice that we heard at the beginning of the trailer it said wake up link uh who is that Hylia. <laughs> is yeah, is it Hylia? Is it Zelda? I mean, who's telling Link to wake up? Is there a difference between Hylia and Zelda? Well, this is true. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um it, it, it all depends on where this is in the timeline, I guess. Mm, I which, see Zelda. Yeah, I mean, which is another thing like where the heck is this in the timeline? <laughs> is I kind of wish I kind of wish that it was a reboot of the timeline. I think someone, I think Alfred actually did a daily debate about that. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it would have been a reboot. Yeah, a reboot of the series, which I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind a reboot of the timeline. Not a lot of people like it. Or it could just take place after all the timeline crap. <laughs> <laughs> and reunify them again. Yeah, like I said, it would still be considered a reboot. Like, sorry, a little off topic, like with the God of War game. He's got Kratos is now doing of Norse God. So yeah, of course we're gonna reboot oh! out of it. You mean Dad of War? Yeah, Dad of War. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dad of War. Yeah, but that's what they did. Instead of just calling God of War Four, they knew it's gonna be a whole new setting, a whole new character and stuff, so they just called it God of War. Yeah. So I can see him doing it in Zelda where it just takes place after all the entire timeline and it's just a new unified piece in the in the history of Zelda. Yeah. Oh, man, there's a lot of information to take in. <laughs> okay, so to, I guess we're going to kind of wrap it up then, Yeah, correct? let's wrap it up. I mean, we've, we've been okay. going for about 45 minutes, and I know uh, the crew at E3 is going to be recording a new episode of the podcast. They're all going to be together in one room, and I'm sure they're going to be talking about Breath of the Wild for hours. So if you want more Breath of the Wild discussion... Uh, you should check on the site to see when the the next episode of the podcast is up. They're recording that yeah. tonight. Hopefully they'll hopefully they'll be able to play the game too because I heard about the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, by the way, Breath of the Wild is amazing. I just needed to say that that game. I mean, it looks perfect. 
Oh my god, it looks magnificent. It looks yeah. like the one of the best looking Zelda games I've seen in a long time. It is the best looking Zelda game, period, graphic wise and visually wise. Mm-hmm. Like, and I told you earlier, imagine this on the NX if the rumors <laughs> about the NX's power is true. Oh yeah, I mean it, it'll be awesome. I plan on getting it for both. So to kind of wrap it up, then um, let's just go around and say what our our favorite thing about this reveal was. Okay. And we'll start. I guess we'll start with uh, Christian. Crap. Okay, it's <laughs> kind of stuck. It can It's kind of stuck between. Just jumping and the open world. Because, <laughs> well, the open world is massive and great, and there's so much you can do just from watching the five straight hours of it mm-hmm. is great. But And that it wasn't even one – that was 1% of the game. They're like, they're like, by the way, this area is 1% of the map. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. But then, but then again, there's also the jump button. Something <laughs> – the, the tiniest little thing that people, Zelda, fans have been asking for for quite a while now. Yeah. But in the end, though, I would have to say the open world because um, there's so much you can do. They've already confirmed there's over like 100 mini dungeons and there's like the you shrines, can do them in yeah. any – you can pretty much do them in any order. And there's so the variety of stuff you can do without actually having to touch the main quest. And I think the open world overall for me is the big thing. Mm. Okay. Uh, Darren. All right. Um, mine is kind of the world. It's just a screwing around aspect of it, <laughs> like just yeah. going around, exploring, gathering everything. You know, raiding the camps, chopping down trees to cross the rivers. Uh, you know, just exploration and discovery of that huge world. I'm going to waste days and weeks doing that before you know I even get anywhere with the main quest. That's why I do when it comes to open world games too. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of side quests you can do. Oh, but there's also make side quests. Yeah. I want to see everything. <laughs> yeah, like I, I before I even, you know, try to seriously power through the main quest, I, I'm just gonna go around and explore and beef up my items and discover. That's my favorite part about this game is it's I can go around and discover things, uh, which is something that has been severely limited in past Zelda games. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Alfred, it is your turn. You are on the spotlight. Don't mess us up. Ooh. So I, <laughs> I agree with the whole open world and exploration thing, but I feel like this is going to be the most story-driven Zelda game we've gotten Ooh, yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, I true. am a big fan of good stories in video games. Yes. So I'm so excited to see where this goes because... Like, uh, I think you said it on the podcast, Darren, that the Sheikah is something that hasn't really been explored in any Zelda game. It's just mm-hmm. been hinted at. Yeah. Um, but it seems like they have a huge part to play. And maybe Link's Sheikah in this game. Maybe he's not Hylian. Um, yeah, that Yeah, that would be interesting. Like I said earlier in on this recording was that, um, you know, there's it's a, she really Sheikah heavy, you know. And I think that's going to be the main story drive is finding out more about the Sheikahs in their early time. If it is, it takes place after Skyward. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I, th- I just think that that's really cool because, you know, the motto for Nintendo has always been, like, every time they've talked about story is, well, we're gameplay first, then story second. Um, and I've always felt that stories have kind of suffered because of that mindset. Um, but it looks like at this time they've decided to go, okay, well, gameplay and story are just as important um, as as each other. Like, they're both important, and we need to focus equally on both of them like have a good story and a good gameplay yeah um and i'm really really excited to see because we already see that there's great gameplay yeah, um, yeah and i'm really 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 hoping that this story is great because so far from what we've seen it's like okay i have no idea what's going on but i can't wait to find out yeah all right well i guess that i guess that marks the end of this episode of zi reacts breath of the wild mm-hmm. looks awesome uh you guys mm-hmm. want to give a quick shout out for your twitter handles I don't have a Twitter, but I like to promote my YouTube channel if I can. Go ahead. Um, me and my brother do a reaction video series called Super Reaction Bros. We pretty much react to, well, we've reacted to E3 this past uh, week, and um, so far we've also reacted to movie trailers, things like that, television episodes. So check it out. We're um, youtube.com slash Super Reaction Bros. Nice. Nice. Alfred? Okay. My Twitter is at uh, RealDern. R e a l d e r n. For those who don't post... know, that is actually my Twitter. <laughs> I 
I post funny things and I repost Alfred a lot. Yeah, you're um something metal Alfie. Full metal Alfie. Yeah, full metal Alfie. Okay. I think that's me. Yes, and as he said before, my Twitter, Real Dern, R E A L D E R, and I tweet stuff about Zelda, Nintendo, gaming, comedy, whatever. Make sure to turn it, uh, tune into the next episode of the Zelda Informer podcast for more in-depth discussion, different opinions, and a lot of Breath of the Wild. Thanks, guys. Definitely, because they'll play it, yeah. 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 Peace.